The Field of the Grounded Arms Saratoga by Fitzgreen Halleck. Strangers, your eyes are on that valley fixed intently as we gaze on vacancy, when the mind's wings overspread the spirit world of dreams. True, tis a scene of loveliness, the bright green dwelling of the summer's firstborn hours, whose wakened leaf and bud are welcoming the morn. And morn returns the welcome, sun and cloud smile on the green earth from their home in heaven, even as a mother smiles above her cradled boy, and wreath their light and shade o'er plain and mountain, or sleepless seas of grass whose waves are flowers, the river's golden shores, the forests of dark pines, the song of the wild bird is on the wind, the hum of the wild bee, the music wild of waves upon the bank, of leaves upon the bough. But all is song and beauty in the land, beneath her skies of June, then journey on, a thousand scenes like this will greet you ere the eve. Ye linger yet, ye see not, hear not now the sunny smile, the music of today, your thoughts are wandering up, far up the stream of time, and boyhood's lore and fireside listen tales are rushing on your memories, as ye breathe that valley's storied name, Field of the Grounded Arms. Strangers no more, a kindred pride of place, pride in the gift of country and of name speaks in your eye and step, ye tread your native land, and your high thoughts are on her glory's day the solemn sabbath of the week of battle, whose tempests bowed to earth her foeman's banner here. The forest leaves lay scattered, cold and dead, upon the withered grass that autumn morn, when, with as withered hearts and hopes as dead and cold, a gallant army formed their last array upon that field, in silence and deep gloom, and at their conqueror's feet laid their war weapons down. Sullen and stern, disarmed but not dishonored, Brave men, but brave in vain, they yielded there. The soldier's trial task is not alone to die. Honor to chivalry! The conqueror's breath stains not the airmine of his foeman's fame, nor mocks his captive's doom, the bitterest cup of war. But be that bitterest cup the doom of all whose swords are lightning flashes in the cloud of the invader's wrath, threatening a gallant land. His army's trumpet tones wake not alone her slumbering echoes, From a thousand hills her answering voices shout, and her bells ring to arms. Then danger hovers o'er the invader's march, on raven wings hushing a song of fame, and glory's hues of beauty fade from the check of death. A foe is heard in every rustling leaf, a fortress seen in every rock and tree. The eagle eye of art is dim and powerless then, and war becomes a people's joy. The drum man's merriest music, and the field of death his couch of happy dreams after life's harvest home. He battles heart and arm, his own blue sky above him and his own green land around, land of his father's grave, his blessing and his prayers, land where he learnt to lisp a mother's name, the first beloved in life, the last forgot, land of his frolic youth, land of his bridal eve, land of his children. Vain your column strength, invaders, vain your battles steel and fire, Choose ye the morrow's doom, a prison or a grave. And such were Saratoga's victors, such the yeoman brave, whose deeds and death have given a glory to her skies, a music to her name. In honorable life her fields they trod, in honorable death they sleep below. Their sons' proud feelings here, their noblest monuments. A selection from The Battle, out of Marmion, by Sir Walter Scott. By this, though deep the evening fell, still rose the battle's deadly swell, for still the Scots around their king unbroken fought in desperate ring. Where's now their victor voward wing? Where Huntley and where home? Oh, for a blast of that dread horn on Fontarabian echoes borne that to King Charles did come when Roland brave and Olivier and every paladin and peer on Roncesvalles died. Such blast might warn them, not in vain, to quit the plunder of the slain, and turn the doubtful day again. Well, yet, on Flodden's side, afar, the royal standard flies, and round it toils, and bleeds, and dies our Caledonian pride. In vain the wish, 
For far away, while spoil and havoc mark their way, Near Sibyl's cross the plunderers stray. O oh, lady, cried the monk, away, and placed her on her steed, and led her to the chapel fair of Tilmouth upon Tweed. There all the night they spent in prayer, and at the dawn of morning there she met her kinsman, Lord Fitzclair. But as they left the darkening heath, more desperate grew the strife of death. The English shafts in volleys hailed, in headlong charge their horse assailed, front, flank, and rear, the squadron sweep to break the Scottish circle deep that fought around their king. But yet, though thick the shafts as snow, though charging knights like whirlwinds go, though billmen ply the ghastly blow, unbroken was the ring. The stubborn spearmen still made good their dark, impenetrable wood, each stepping where his comrade stood the instant that he fell. No thought was there of dastard flight, Linked in the serried phalanx tight, Groom fought like noble, squire like knight, As fearlessly and well, Till utter darkness closed her wing O'er their thin host and wounded king. Then skillful Surrey's sage commands Led back from strife his shattered bands, And from the charge they drew, As mountain waves from wasted lands Sweep back to ocean blue. Then did their loss his foemen know, their king, their lords, their mightiest glow, they melted from the field as snow, when streams are swollen and south winds blow, dissolves in silent dew. Tweed's echoes heard the ceaseless plash, while many a broken band, disordered through her currents dash, to gain the Scottish land. To town and tower, to down and dale, to tell Red Flodden's dismal tale, and raise the universal wail. Tradition, legend, tune, and song shall many an age that wail prolong. Still from the sire the sun shall hear of the stern strife and carnage drear of Flodden's fatal field, where shivered was fair Scotland's spear and broken was her shield. <laughs>